Our tests confirm that Wes has bacterial meningitis and not viral, which means there's no real risk to the rest of the club. So we will be able to resume business as usual then? Absolutely. Dr. Bradley seems to have taken all the right precautions, so there shouldn't be anything to worry about. Obviously, you should all keep checking for any symptoms, and we'll have to keep a close eye on uh, the Kelly James and Billy O'Neill over the next 48 hours as they've been in close contact with the patient. And what about Wes Kingsley? They will pull through, won't they? It's too early to say. The diagnosis has been prompt. However, even though the antibiotics we've given Wes will kill the bacteria, it's the after effects, such as septicemia, that can cause serious damage. Max, you do believe me, don't you? Believe you? What about? You know for well what about? About Jerry, about the shooting. Linda, you've got to sort it out. You've got to get a grip on yourself. Have you thought about talking to someone? You know, someone professional. <laughs> I'm not mad, Maxine. Linda, from one chance remark the other day, you've got it into your head that Jerry's some kind of murderer. I mean, please. It's hardly the sort of thing normal people go around saying, is it? Right, um... They need me at the club. I think it's a shame they won't let you relax for five minutes. Sweetheart, are you going to see me to the door? No, Jerry. I'm not going to see you to the door. Listen to me for one moment. You'd better start pulling yourself together. We have both suffered a lot, one way or another. But it's about time you calmed down and started to live a normal life for both our sakes. For your sake, you mean? I just can't believe it. It happened so quickly. Two days ago, he was fine, and now he... Kelly's yeah, going to be fine, don't worry. You, you pull out. Honest. You can go in now. Um, do you know this bacterial thing? Is, is it the one like, where you can lose your toes and fingers and that? There have been cases when, due to blood clots forming, amputations have been necessary. But when that occurs, it usually involves much younger patients. I promise you, we're doing everything we can for Wes. I know. Thank you. You know, I've just been calculating this. To postpone this match, we're going to lose half a million pounds. Now, as it's the only form of revenue we've got coming in in the next two weeks, it's not going to actually help our cash flow situation, is it? Yeah, but we're only postponing the match. We are going to play the fixture later on in the season. No, that could be too late. We need the money now to pay the interest rates. So, what glad tidings have you brought me, then? Well, I've just come from the hospital. Uh, it's been confirmed that Wes has bacterial meningitis, which means we don't have to worry about the Palmer game. Well, that's some good news, I suppose. Yeah, well, not for Wes it isn't. Hold on a minute. As I understand this disease, if it is bacterial, it's not contagious, right? Yes, why? Right, get me Dr. Bradley. Sorry? Dr. Bradley. Get me Dr. Bradley, because if it is bacterial and it's not contagious, then why did he recommend that we postpone the match tomorrow, eh? Day, you know, the match is postponed. I'm getting ready for a day off. Well, maybe it's because there's a meningitis scare at the club, Eddie. So? So Wes is still in a coma, isn't he? You've got a pain for you? Ah, oh, no, no. We lost it. You ain't even ready, have you? Easy, man. I'm going to live forever, me and I. Strong as an ox, bruv. Eddie, mate, it's ain't a joke. Okay, Wes 
is in a hospital somewhere fighting for his life. Is that clear to you? Okay, any one of us could catch this disease. Eddie Moliano could be the next Hartchester player close to death. And what part of that don't you understand? All right, man, I hear you, I hear you. Right, give that a read, okay? You get it in your ankles, you get it in your groin, and you can get it in your armpits. All right, read it or you get a slap. Armpits? This one's from Leeds, this one's from Palmer. Leeds want assurances that none of their people were exposed to an infectious disease last week. I employ a doctor to sort that out. Talking to that, where is the damn doctor? I asked him to be here an hour ago. What's the hold-up? Well, it's a stab in the dark, but I think he might be a little bit busy at the moment. Right, all right. What's the other facts about? It's the president of Palmer. We're playing them in the next leg of the UEFA Cup, remember? We employ a club secretary to sort this sort of thing out, so give it to Roger Frost and let him sort it out. The president of Palmer has just faxed the chairman of Hartchester United concerned for the welfare of his players. He wants to know if the game should go ahead next week. Don't you think a personal response would show some more respect? All right. OK, get, get Frost to draw up some adequate reply and I'll put my little signature to it, all right? Come in. Uh, you wanted to see me? Yes, I did. Yesterday, you made me cancel a home game. And today, I understand there was no reason to do it. Now, according to your own literature, Doctor, bacterial meningitis, otherwise known as MM bacteria, cannot survive, and I repeat, cannot survive more than three seconds outside the human body. So there was no reason to cancel. Am I right? What are you talking about? Scaremongering. That's what I'm talking about. <sighs> Considering we didn't know which strain of meningitis we were dealing with yesterday, I had no option but to take precautions I deem fit. Those precautions including postponing a game where, in my professional opinion, the players, the staff, and a crowd of 30,000 spectators were at risk. Yes, but... And just for the record, Mr. Block, if I was faced with that same situation again, I would have no hesitation in reacting in exactly the same way. I'm in bed. Can I get you anything? No thanks, I'm almost asleep. Why is this door locked? I just didn't want to be disturbed, that's all. Sleep well then? I will. Listen in. Dr. Bradley's going to say a few words about our present situation. We've had confirmation that Wes is suffering from bacterial meningitis. Now, this isn't particularly contagious, and as you've all had antibiotics, the chance of anyone else becoming ill is very slight. You should all continue to check for symptoms, however. So it's business as usual. Now, we've got the big game against Palmer next week. So preparation starts 9 o'clock, training tomorrow morning. Mm, I don't know, I'm feeling ill now. Maybe I should go to hospital. Shut up, Scott. All right, that'll do. Where's he still really ill? Ryan, I went to the hospital this morning and he's still in a coma. What does the doctor say? Well, he should recover, but... It's still early days. Okay, lads. That'll do. See you in the morning. If anybody sees Eddie Moliano, tell him he's in big trouble for ducking out of this. No, no, no. Kingsley, um, Kelly, a good friend of Wes's. Wesley has spoken to me about you. Has he? Quite a bit recently, as a matter of fact. I'm glad. Hello, this is Linda Block. Yeah, I'd like to order a cab, please, for 30 minutes' time. On my account. Yeah, could you please tell the driver not to ring the doorbell? I'll meet him outside on the street. I'll be carrying an overnight bag. Could you...
you tell him not to be late, please? Thank you. No, no, no. Do you remember when you were a small boy? You had a natural right foot. All the time I would say, kick with the left, with the left. I hope I'm not disturbing anyone. No. And um, this is Mrs. Kingsley. Hi. How is he? No change. Um, Anne's my boss. She knows Wes very well. Everyone connected with the club is thinking about your son, Mrs. Kingsley. Thank you. That is a comfort. Can I have a quick word? Yeah. Um, excuse us. You look shattered. I couldn't, I couldn't sleep now if I tried. Take as much time off as you need, yeah? Don't worry about anything. Yeah, thanks. Why don't you come round for something to eat tonight? I can't. I've got to stay here. Kelly, you're running on empty. You're going to be no use to Wes or anyone if you wear yourself out. Yeah. You can come back here after you've eaten. I can't leave Billy on his own. Well, he can join us. Okay. Right, that's settled. You come round when you're ready, yeah? Thanks. Have I got it or what? Drop your trousers and shorts, please. Okay, pull them up. Look, what is it, Doc? Am I a victim? Have you changed your deodorant recently? Well, yeah, I've actually, yeah. Well, could you tell me from what to what? Just from a roll onto a spray. Yes, I thought so. This rash has been caused by your skin's reaction to a change in chemical. <laughs> what are you saying? It's my deodorant? I think so. I don't mind telling you, Doc, you had me going here for a minute or two. <laughs> tell me, why do you spray deodorant around your crotch? Well, you, uh, you never know when you're going to get lucky, eh, Doc? You know what I'm saying? Linda? Damn! You stupid cow! Call for Linda Block. The Grange, please. How is he? No change. His mum's still with him. Um, do, you want a, do you want a cup of tea or something to eat? Well, Anne's invited us to Scott's for dinner. Us? Yes, as in you and me. I don't think I could handle the night of Scott Lucas tonight, Kel. Billy, please. Anne wants you to go and I can't exactly go on my own, can I? OK, I'll go. But if Scott gets on my case, that's it. I'm out of there, right? OK. Linda? Come in. Are you all right? Can I talk to you? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I wouldn't have come, but I didn't know where else to turn. Nobody believes me. Go on, I'm listening. I think Jerry was responsible for the shooting of John Black and me. I know he did it. I know now, but nobody believes me. He was trying to kill Louise. Now, I've been told I've got to be the perfect host tonight, so whatever you want, just ask, all right? All right, Kel. Glad you can make it, Billy, OK? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, let me take your coats. 
Can I come through to the kitchen? I'm just finishing off. Thanks. So what's happening then, William? Wish I knew. How's, uh, how's Wes? Not good, Paul. Jerry knew about me and Louise. He wanted revenge. Now, he couldn't bear to lose me, so he had to get rid of Louise. It all makes sense. Jerry gets mad with jealousy. He was furious about the night with Diddy, eh? Yeah, but it's a big step from jealousy to trying to murder somebody. I mean, it doesn't sound like Jerry. Yeah, but I know him. You don't know him. Look, he's trying to keep me quiet. Look, it's okay. It's okay. Look, do you want to go and rest? You can use my bedroom if you like. Thank you. Nobody takes me seriously. They all think I'm a lunatic. I'm not crazy, Ray. So what do you reckon then, William? Oh, well. Anne's cooking. What else? Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's great. Thanks, Anne. Well, it's better than all that hospital food that Wes has got to look forward to. Yeah. Listen, he's going to be up and about soon, you know. Complain about the service he's getting from the nurse, isn't it? How do you know? Well, I know Wes, don't I? All right, not as well as all you lot, but, you know, I know he's a fighter. Sorry, I really should get back to the hospital. Can I call a cab? No, don't worry, I'll drive you. We can leave the washing up for the men. Listen, I should be going myself, actually. Oh, look, don't feel you have to, Billy. Yeah, look, uh, look just hang around for a few drinks with me, yeah? She's only joking about the washing up. Yeah, OK. Scott, thanks for dinner, tough guy. <laughs> Billy, look, don't worry about me. I'll probably spend the night with Wes, OK? Sure. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Will you go through to her, please? Um, thanks very much for calling me. Uh, I know this must have been very awkward for you, but you did the right thing. I just hope she's okay. Well, my wife hasn't been very well of late. She's turning into a bundle of nerves. We're very worried about her. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, still, I know I can rely on your discretion. Yeah, yeah. People are laughing. They're saying your injury has affected your brain, and I hate it. I hate seeing you like this. You're wrong, Maxine. You are so wrong. Listen to me. You're humiliating yourself and Jerry. And I've had enough of your self-indulgent rubbish. So shut up. Right, now, there is nothing to worry about, my darling. All right, the car's downstairs waiting for us, and we'll have you home in no time. There we are. There you go. Thank you. Uh, did Linda say anything in particular to you? I mean, did she say what was troubling her at all? No, nothing. She just turned up out of the blue. I don't know why she turned up in my room. Right. Anyway, thanks very much again. I owe you one. It makes you think all this, uh... chance, did you? You had it in for him the moment he arrived. Treating him like dirt off the sole of your shoe. And now you're sitting there like Lord Muck. I tell you what, it makes you think all this, doesn't it? Shut up. Well, your girlfriend's gone now. You can go back to being a selfish git. Hey, Billy, man. I don't want to know, Scott. Listen, mate, you're upset, aren't you? Yeah, and you're a prat. Oh, all right, yeah, okay. When we started, yeah, we didn't see eye to eye. I grant you that, okay? But that doesn't mean I don't care, okay? And yes, Scott Lucas is a prat, okay? I am a prat sometimes. That's the last thing I was trying to do tonight, okay? I was... I'm sorry. 
just look, get me another beer, all right? I hope you can hear me. I met your mum today. Got on very well. And um, everyone at the club's rooting for you. And I'm sends her love. The doctor says you'll be playing again in no time. I never thought I'd meet anyone like you. Mr. Block, Miss Harwood, sorry to keep you waiting. Where's Mr. Ridley? Oh, he took early retirement last month. I'm Darren Eastley, your new branch manager, and this is Lisa Evans, who handles your accounts day to day. Handles my account? She doesn't hold enough to handle her own pocket money. Jerry. Sorry? Uh, I was just saying, Darren, that time's money to us, you know, and we, we, we've got a meeting at midday, and then we've got to see the team off to Italy, yes, of course. Well, the reason we asked you in today was to discuss the current position of your loans. It's one that I reckon I'll be fair again. Well, you're only a few days out of a call, man. You're going to have to take it slowly. How slowly? Well, the consultants told me six to eight weeks before you can start running. I could be out for the rest of the season. Just take it easy, big fella. You've had bacterial meningitis. You might be over the danger period, but you're going to be weak for some time. And we're all made up, you've pulled through. But we want you back in one piece, yeah? Yeah. Look, I'll have to go. I've got to go and sort the lads out for the palm again. But I'll let them know you're doing well. Just take it easy, OK? <laughs> Look after them. Mr Block, with respect, the bank has already rescheduled the loans twice this season. So what are you going to do? Hmm? What are you going to do? Close us down? Yeah. I mean, that's going to look very good, isn't it, with our supporters in the city, who may well bank with you, right? Things can't go on the way they are. The club needs more money invested, either by you, Mr. Block, or by somebody else. Otherwise, it's difficult to see how you're going to avoid administration. Listen to me. Well, maybe we should wait until after the two Palmer games, OK? Things will be a lot clearer by then. I'll talk to head office. But you need to do something quickly, Miss Harwood. If the club goes out of the UEFA Cup, Things will be very clear indeed. And Manchester United lead today for the UEFA Cup. Fourth round, first leg tie in Parma without Wes Kingsley, who is still recovered in hospital from meningitis. Well, a four from Bob Adams, reporting live from the Dragon's Lair later. Listen, thanks for putting me up last night, yeah? Yeah, no worries, man, no worries. I don't think I could have faced that flat on the own. <laughs> Sounds like Wes is on the man now, eh? Yeah, thank God. Do you know what, right? I was beginning to think that it was a jinx on me, mates. Listen, um, thanks for the lift and that, yeah? It's a nice car you got me. Ah, just run around, mate. Yeah, well, maybe you'll be getting yourself going soon, eh? What with the impact you've been making on the season? <laughs> You're joking, aren't you? The money I'm on. <laughs> you know what you want to do, mate? You want to get yourself a new contract? Yeah, I've still got two years on this one, haven't I? Yeah, well, look, all you've got to do, right? Tell them you're not going to renew, all right? You're going to sit out, that'll get you a bosman. And you watch and they'll rush to the table and they realise they can't get a transfer fee for you. Yeah, I must admit I'm on peanuts. I mean, when I was doing the 21s and that, you know, some of the lads tell me what they were on. It's just a different league, you know what I mean? Yeah, you've got to sort it out, mate. Yeah. Listen, yeah, I'll see you later, right? Oh, man. Have a word, please, sir. Enough, two. It's raining now. It's just, a, it's about a new contract. All of you happy with the one I've got, thanks. <laughs> no, I mean mine, you know. See, I've been thinking. That can be dangerous, you know. What it is, right? When I was in the under 21s, I was talking to some of the lads and they were telling me what they were getting. And that. Would that be the lads from Leeds and Arsenal? Well, yeah, yeah. But we're not them, are we? I know, but I was thinking now that Gordon's gone, you know, you can, like, have a word of the powers and try and renegotiate a new contract for me. Billy, I'm the coach. Well, you're not you're the manager at the moment, aren't you? Only until Luis gets back. And he deals with that sort of stuff. I know, but to be honest, I think I'm worth it. You know, the thing is done for this club and that. I'm not saying you're not. I'm saying it's not my area. All right. 
Why the hell are you putting my business in the hands of, of some kid that doesn't even look old enough to shave? You being rude probably cost us a couple of months of goodwill. Time that we need to sort this mess out. When were you going to tell the board? Absolutely nothing. Jerry, you've got to face facts, all right? The club isn't viable anymore. What are you trying to say? Just let me have a look around. See if I can find somebody that would invest in a premiership football club. No, Marilyn. No, it's my club. And I'm not selling my club to some Johnny-come-lately flushed with city money. So what, you're just going to stand by and let it go bust then, are you? No. It's not going to go bust, Marilyn. And do you know why? I'll tell you why. Because we are going to win the UEFA Cup. Thomas? You, sir. Was that Raymond Moy, your uh, wife was man on? All right, just calm down. Now listen, I've just come from the hospital. The news is, Wes is going to be out for two months. But he's over the worst and he sends his best. Joseph. Right, lads, come on, let's get ready for training. I've got a lot of stuff I want to work on this morning. Right, I'll do it by the side. Only if you're very good. Only if you're very good. All right, shut up. I've got some important set pieces to work on for the Palmer game, yeah? Now get a move on. Come on, Billy. Good job, your pants back, son. <laughs> I thought you might like some coffee. Why was the door locked? Um, you were delirious in your sleep, shouting out about things. We thought you might sleepwalk and fall down the stairs. We? Me and Jerry. We were worried about you. Oh, how, how very cosy, how very touching. I'm being treated like a prisoner in my own house. That's rubbish. You've only got your welfare at heart. I'm going to leave you to rest. Don't lock the door. Whatever you say. Just promise to stay calm, all right? Right, gentlemen. Hello, Roy. Gentlemen, I would like to keep this meeting short and sweet, if you don't mind. Now, you'll see from this that although things aren't looking completely healthy, there, um, there is no cause for concern. A good result in Palmer, coupled with the insurance money we're owed for the loss of some of our valuable assets in the air crash, and I think you'll find things will become rosier, all right? Jerry. Yes? If I could raise one or two points. Yes. Okay, Jack. But, um, listen, Jack, do you mind if I hurry you up a bit? Because uh, we've got to get ready to go to Palmer. I I'm sure you'll understand, gentlemen. Can we honestly count on our UEFA Cup run going on? And I thought there was some dispute with the insurance companies about the assets players, I mean, who were so tragically killed. Now, that could take years to resolve. No, I'm quite sure it won't come to that, Jack. And with respect, I think it would be better if you left all those sort of issues to myself and to Marilyn to sort out. Jerry, it seems to me there's been quite a gloss put on some of these figures. You don't compare this year's income with last season's, for example. And it looks to be well down to me. Okay. Uh, Marilyn, could you explain that to him, please? He's been in today. Can he, um, can he fit me in for a trim? Great, okay. I'll see you at four o'clock then. Cheers, bye. Linda? Frightened, Carl. Well, you frightened a lot of us. I don't know. It's not one minute you're feeling fit and strong. But not even yet today I can knock you down, you know? Then the next time, stick the disease. It makes you weak as a baby. Oh, Wes. This could set my career back. How do you figure that? I lose my place in the team. Someone else comes in, does well. It could take me months to get back in. If ever. You are just being negative. I mean, you're not exactly going to become a bad player overnight, are you? Look, we don't know what this disease has taken out of me. Look, you can't afford to think like that. Just be grateful you've come through it. Grateful? Grateful? I'm missing out on a massive game in Italy and you're telling me to be grateful? Don't snap at me. I'm the one here for you, remember? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I and we did have a meeting this morning with the club's bankers. Marilyn, do you mind if I just... I'm sorry, but I'd just like to interrupt here for a moment. Gentlemen, I am very, very disappointed at the tone of this meeting. And I am very disappointed by the omissions in this report. 
The overspend on the stadium we know about, but there are new costs that we didn't expect. The signing of Didi Baptiste, for example, and the hiring of Gordon Gallagher. Yeah, but most of the cost of that was offset by the selling of Michael Dillon to Charles. At a loss of more than two million pounds. The transfer deadline date is nearly on us, Jack. We can always sell another player. Sell players and expect us to get results. I don't think so. And what is this hidden down at the bottom of the second page? Half a million quid paid to one of your companies. Yes, well, Jack, as much as I'd like to discuss that with you all day, I really can't... Would you excuse me a minute, please? Hello. Yes, it is. Would you excuse me, gentlemen, please? You'd better put her on, then. where she's gone. She's just gone. In the car. I, I know she shouldn't be driving. I couldn't stop her. Well, just find her and keep me informed. She's here now. Linda, my darling. Don't you darling me. Do you want to tell me what you're trying to do to me, locking me in? Sweetheart, please, we are in the middle of a very important board meeting. But leave it to me, Jerry. I'll handle this, yeah? Come on, Linda, let's go to my office. No! I think these people should know what you're doing. Or rather, what you've done. You're a murderer, Jerry. My husband is a murderer. Linda, please. Sweetheart, let me take you home. Don't let him anywhere near me. Keep him away from me. Don't let him touch you. I'll deal with this, all right? No, gentlemen, please. It's just a little domestic problem. If you'd like to go back into the boardroom, then we'll, I'll send up for some drinks, all right? Good. OK, there we are. Thank you very much. Don't let him in here. Shh. Come on, it's all right. It's all right. It was him all along. He fixed it up. Fixed what up? What? What? The shooting at Wembley. Yeah, I didn't mean to get John Black shot. Maybe not me, either. It was Louise he was after. You know we were having an affair, don't you? Yeah, yeah well, Jerry found out just before the cup final. No. You don't believe me, do you? You don't, do you? It's all right. Shh. <laughs> Jack, I'm terribly sorry about all that, but my wife's been under a lot of strain recently. So, when are we going to reconvene this meeting? Oh, very soon, Jack, very soon. Jerry, I'm worried. Remember, my family's been involved with this club for generations. We still own 15%. My mother's pension is linked with the club's fortunes. I have a right to some answers. Of course you do, Jack, of course you do. I mean, everything's going to be fine, believe me. Why don't you go home, pick up your wife, and be guests of mine in Palmer? All expenses paid. I don't think so. We need to be saving money, not spending it. The best thing you can do for me is win at the UEFA Cup. Consider it done, Jack. Consider it done. All right, quiet down, listen up. A few things for you to think about on your journey. Now, Palmer play with the back three and wing-backs. You know, Turam and Bogosian are from the French national teams. They love time on the ball. We can't give it to them, huh? Thank you, Didi. You just take care of business at the back. The strength of this team is in attack. Ortega and Di Vaio are up front. We can't let the Argentinians do us again, can we, lads? Eh? No, no, no. You know, I think we need to take Ortega man for man. You know, he loves to make these sexy little runs from deep between the midfield and the striker, how do you say him? In the hole. Huh? <laughs> what do you think, Craig? Yeah, thank you, Didi. That's for me to worry about. We'll talk about that tonight after we've trained in their stadium. Now, if you leave it to me. Okay. Yeah, of course, huh? It's just really nice to be able to do a good job with a man who knows European football, you know. Now that Braveheart has gone back to Scotland. Yeah, well, knowledge is one thing. Making practical use of it is another. And that's down to you lot. And, uh, nice to have somebody who might loosen up a little bit, eh, Ray? Listen, Gordon Gallagher may have had his faults, but he knew the value of discipline within a football club. Yeah, right, the value of punishment, more. Right? Listen, just because Gordon Gallagher's gone, it doesn't mean things are going to get any easier. Because I'm no pushover. Do you understand me? Do you understand me? Yeah. Right, now, listen. When you're travelling, you're representing this club. I don't want to see any over-the-top behaviour. 
That includes chatting up air stewardesses. Well, you must admit, it does sound a little bit far-fetched. What did the police come up with, then? Nothing. I, I know Jerry's pulled a few strokes in his time, but this is just mad. Yeah, I know, but it's true, I swear. Look, I've got to get out of the house. They're treating me like a prisoner. You've got to help me, Marilyn. Yeah, I, I will, yes. I know this is hard for you, but you've got to believe me. Oh, this is all she needs. I told you before, leave her alone. Get bad news where she's concerned. Excuse me, if you don't mind, I'm trying to help her. Well, you can help by butting out. Oh, Lynn, I'm sorry. I didn't realise you were so upset. Come on. Let's get you home where it's safe. Marilyn, don't let her take me. Jerry's going to go to jail for what he's done. He's a killer. He's a killer. Eddie, throw up. Sorry about that, Mark. I have Ray Wyatt here with me now, caretaker manager of Harchester United. I hate this. Uh, after the postponement, I should be there with him. Well, you will be. Just give it time, yeah? I don't know. You soon get forgotten in this game. I mean, no one's come to see me, have they? Well, there's a big difference between coach and manager, isn't there, Ray? Definitely, yeah. More responsibility, more pressure. That sort of thing proved too much for Brian Kidd at Blackburn Rovers, didn't it? We're totally different characters. Anyway, I'm only here on a caretaker basis. Hopefully I'll string a few results together before the head honcho gets back. Well, thank you, Ray, and good luck in Palmer. That was a bit below the belt, wasn't it? The Brian Kidd stuff. Sorry, I didn't realise I touched a nerve. You didn't. If you want some cooperation from me on this trip, you show some respect. And don't have a go about my abilities as manager. All right. Come on, boys, get on the coach. Come in. Jack, everything all right? What was all that about with Mrs. Block? Oh, it's just a family matter, nothing we need to worry about. What I am worried about is the state of this club. Well, you heard Jerry say that he had it all under control. And you believe that? Marilyn, you know I've come to respect you since you've come to this club. You've done a great job. But Jerry, well, we're in a mess, aren't we? And he won't admit it. Yeah, I, th I think he's trying to see the longer-term view. If we're not careful, there won't be a longer term. I'm worried that what happened to Crystal Palace could happen here. We overstretch ourselves and end up in liquidation. Or bankrupt. I'm not going to oversee that, am I? I, I own 5% of this club too, remember? Jerry is a rock. We both know that. Yes. And rocks are what ships get wrecked on. Do you want to go down with this ship? Because I know I don't. I can't quite believe what's going on here. What you're doing to me. What you're doing to him, you mean? Doing to him? Can't you honestly see what he's done? Linda, all you have are crazy theories. You've absolutely no proof of anything. Why are you standing up for him? I just think he's good for you. He loves you. Oh, and I haven't done anything for him, I suppose. You're on his side, aren't you? Of course not. It's not about sides. You know what, Maxine? I think I want you to leave my house. You're unwell. I can't leave. I am perfectly okay. Now get out. I promised Jerry I'd stay. What? This has got nothing to do with Jerry. I want you to leave. Now get out! And I'm saying no. I'll go when Jerry tells me to go. <laughs> Wes. Wes. Hmm? You're not going to believe this. Oh, you easily get forgotten in this game, do you? <laughs> I think that went rather well, don't you? Which bit? The board meeting or that stuff with Linda? Ah, Linda, yeah, that was very unfortunate. It's not very well, you know. No, I can see that. And those allegations about you being involved in the shooting? Marilyn, 
I mean, it's, that's, that's rubbish. What are you looking at me like that for? What are you thinking? I'm telling you, it's hysterical nonsense. Yeah, of course. But this stuff with Jack isn't nonsense. Turnover's down from last year, overheads are up, and we are not reducing our debt. If we don't think of something quickly, the only possibility is bankruptcy. Oh, dear. Eight years you've worked for me, Marilyn. Eight years. Have I ever let you down? Hmm? We will not go bankrupt. Yes, we are going through difficult times. Yes, we've had a run of bad luck and a, and a few bad results, but there is no need to panic. I just wish you would consider the possibility of bringing in new money. A new investor could help solve all our problems. A if... new investor would want to take over the club, and for a start, you would lose your job. Jerry, please! You're not listening to me, Marilyn. Listen to me. I do not want a new investor in this club, and I do not want you panicking. Frankly, I'm very disappointed in you. Because I didn't think you were the panicking type. Come on now, lads, don't fire him out. Now, Keras, you're dropping it, babe. Hey, listen, we just saw we popping on our way to the airport. See how he was, you know. Oh, thanks a lot, guys. I'm really appreciate that. Yeah, it's no fun being banged up in there. I don't know, bro. I reckon you got it made. Three months paid all day and a stunningly beautiful girl look after you. Yeah, could be worse. Hey, listen, right? We're gonna do this one for you. Yeah, look, just like the Italians, right? When we win this tie, I'm gonna go on that TV and I'm gonna say, this one is for my best mate, Wes King. Yeah, yeah, Bill, yeah. you know it, mate. Yeah. 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 All right, boys, let's give him some peace and quiet. All the best, Wes. Okay. Cheers, Gaffer. Great, Wes. Take on the old girl upstairs, mate. Listen, guys. Good luck in Italy, yeah? You know what, yeah, yeah. Don't worry, son. What? Hi, it's me, Marilyn. Oh, well, you know, I've been better. Listen, remember I once asked you if you ever wanted to invest in a football club? Yeah, well, um, how would you like to take one over? With me. Jean Hackman and Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio fight it out in the court drama Class Action over on Sky Premier next. Here on Sky One, though, saving the world from a milk shortage, Mega Babies.